Hello and welcome to episode 53 of Legacy Gaming with Atari Man 71. I'm currently playing through my collection of Atari 2600 cartridges right now. I have over 450 cartridges, I believe 400 of which are unique games. I'm only planning on playing the unique games here because the others are just, you know, rebranded or repackaged and it doesn't make sense to play the same game twice. I will, um, however, you know, touch on them a little bit if there's some subtle difference in the game versus the original. I, if you're into retro gaming, or as I call this, legacy gaming, and I call it legacy because it is the um, start of the home console industry, in my opinion. There are systems that came around before it, but, you know, this is really when it became commonplace in people's homes. And so if you enjoy this kind of content, please follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. If there's something you'd like to see, please leave a comment or participate in the chat on Twitch. And you can also uh, hit me up on Twitter. I'm very active on Twitter. I put additional content out there. And right now I'm playing my Atari 2600, but I have a 5200, a 7800, an XE gaming system. I have a ColecoVision, an Intellivision, and an Odyssey 2. I also have a Nintendo Entertainment System, and a Sega Genesis, and a Super Nintendo. I also have other systems, you know, disc-based systems that maybe we'll get into, but I also am thinking I'm going to play... Um, emulators and stuff like that, you know, in the future. Hi, for transparency's sake, I just wanted to let you know I re-recorded the gameplay for this stream. Unfortunately, I forgot to hit record on OBS Studio, and I didn't realize it until I went to hit stop record, and it started recording. So, the gameplay is a little different than what I did in my stream. Um, maybe played a little better, I mean, maybe not by much, but I played a little better, and um, so anyway... Um, please enjoy, and please realize that uh, this is my second go at it for the day. Thank you. So tonight I'm going to continue on my Activision collection. I have three more games. I have Frostbite, Pressure Cooker, and Space Shuttle. And so I will call up my information for Frostbite. So Frostbite is cartridge AX-031. It was released in 1983. And it uses the joystick controller, and as usual, I have my Wiko Command controller here. And um, this is not a game that I played when I was younger, and I didn't know anyone that had it. Um, in practice, you know, the game was kind of confusing at first, but after reading the instructions, it's pretty fun and it's pretty obvious. In effect, what you need to do is jump to the ice flow on the on the water, and turn the the ice patches from white to blue and then once you've turned them all blue and each row turns blue if you jump on any one of the ice patches on it um, turn them all to blue they turn white again and then you need to turn them blue again every time you jump on an ice patch you build a piece of your igloo on the shore and it's a timed game there's 45 seconds and at the end of it um, you need to jump in your igloo now in addition to that the um there's fish that you can collect for points that's your only food source and then there's also clams birds and um crabs that are just there to knock you off then there's also a polar bear in the later levels which i don't know if i'll get to because i'm not that good but if i don't i'll just select a different game and show you the polar bear because it's kind of interesting so if you score 40,000 the points in the game you earn the badge Arctic Architect. And so the VGR ratings for this game, the graphics are rated four for good and the playability is four for fun. And I'll say it is pretty fun. So here's my copy of Frostbite. I will put this in my Atari. Whoops, I turned it on, but I'll turn the uh, video capture card on so that we see it. And so here you see the, uh, the game. And so I'm just uh, going to play game one here and start off. I'm really not that good. I didn't practice it that much. I apologize. I was sick most of the weekend, which is usually when I do most of my practicing. I was sick most of the weekend. And so now, um, you know, this is essentially practice again. So I probably won't be that good. There's videos of people getting to 40,000 points on YouTube, but uh, 
you know. I will not do that here. So I'm just going to hit reset and start the game. Accidental double jump. Like I said, I'm not really that good. So if you hit the button, I forgot to mention that, you can reverse the ice flow. But I think it takes something away from you. There you see I've finished the igloo. There's a hole. Jump in it. And I get a bonus for the extra time, which is the temperature. When it hits zero degrees, you're done. So here's the fish I was talking about. See, and I think the trick to... Uh, being halfway good at this game. Has to do with reversing the ice flows. Seven degrees. I'm not going to finish it. And now there's crabs. Yeah, I died. I got a couple more lives. That's what I get for uh, focusing on gaining fish more than anything else. So level three. That was my own fault. So like I said, I'm not that good at this game. I'll play it. I'll play it some more times. Stop being so cocky. Oh, no. Maybe if I reverse the ice flow when the birds are pushing me. Though. Oh, no. Got a nice little bonus there. Last life. And I waste it. Oh, I'm never going to finish this one. It's 
two, one. Took too long. Just got one more jump. So I got two lives left to do this third level. I've never successfully finished it yet. These friggin' crabs. I mean, that's hard. I, you gotta jump in between them, I guess. it one more try one more try it's a fun game it's so simple like you you think oh this should be no effort at all Oh no! You can't reverse the ice flow. something else. Oh no! I should have just don't jump straight back. See if I can make this jump and reverse the flow. Oh no! That's game. So that's Frostbite. It's actually, it's actually a pretty fun game. Um, like I said, I've had this in my collection. I didn't say it, but I've had this in collection, my collection, twenty years, and just never played it. Same with the pressure cooker. I've had these games forever, and. Uh, 
just never got around to playing them because I was focused more on, you know, getting the games than playing them, making sure they worked. So here we see pressure cooker. So I will call up my information on pressure cooker. So pressure cooker is cartridge AZ-032. It was also released in 1983. And it also uses the joystick. And this is yet another game that I have no experience with as a child. And uh, in practice, I found it pretty fun to play. And um, although I didn't have it when I was practicing it, I realized that certain elements of this game are very familiar. And so I may have seen it at some point. I, I, I don't know. I, it may have been on another system or it may have been this specific game, but I, I probably never played it. I maybe just see it. So basically in this game, so hamburgers go through an oven and they come out on a conveyor belt. And on the bottom of the screen, you have four orders that, that the ingredients pop out from the right side of the screen. And you have to collect the ingredient, put it on the burger, and then deliver it to the vending machine that's in the next screen, and it wraps it, and, and uh, you go back and build your next burger and um, based on the orders that you have. And the thing is, um, ingredients come out that you don't want, and you can kick them if you push the button, but you have to be situated just right, and you lose points if you get hit by stuff. And, you know, it's, it's actually, and you only catch it if you're in a certain orientation. It's, it's a tough game, but it's actually pretty fun. So in this game, if you score 45,000 points, you can, you can join the short order squad. Um, and Activision used to send you a patch for that. So VGR ratings for this game, the graphics are rated 4 for good, and the playability is 5 for irresistible. And I have to say, it's a, a pretty fun game to play. So I will just uh, reset, and I'm going to just play game 1, so, since the odd ones are one player, and game 1 is probably the easiest. Make sure my difficulties are on B. And I'm just going to reset. So onions, tomatoes, there's three orders. Now see, and see, I'm not catching them right. Alright, so tomato, and then the bun. And when you complete a burger, it gives you the bun. And so you go down here, and it says the green shoot. So I drop in the green shoot. Oh, tomato. Nobody was cheese, it's onions. And... It's the blue one and this is you have to if you miss a little bit nobody's got lettuce it's onions and tomatoes onion bun and it's a red nobody's got lettuce so now I'm gonna screw up so there you kick it back so there's a tomato and it kicks the bun and that's the red again Nobody wants lettuce yet, they all want onion. And they say the red. Nobody wants cheese, it's tomato and onion. Ugh, I got hit in the face. And you can kick this stuff, but man, getting in line to catch it again? It's a pain. I guess the more you play it, the easier it gets. So they, ugh. So I know when you make the burgers wrong, you lose time. And so that's a green. Onion. Uh, onion and tomato. That's a green again. No lettuce. See him when you don't want to grab it. See, but my turn is going to disappear. Yeah, I got one second now. And that's if you put it in the wrong spot. But the, the game's over anyway, so I was just dropping it. It's actually pretty fun. Um, you know, it just takes a lot of skill that maybe I don't have. So you start out with 50 seconds. I think if you don't make any mistakes... Alright. There's always a tomato burger. 
tomato, onion, and lettuce. Tomato is green. No, oh, somebody wants a lettuce. And somebody wanted a tomato. Ugh. Tomato. Oh, and a plane. Plain hamburger is red. Those are the ones you like the most. Tomato and two onion. Blue. Nobody has lettuce. Bun, another plain one. That's the green guy. No lettuce, a plain one. Again. That's the green guy again. No cheese. Lettuce, tomato, and onion. Lettuce. That's the green. Onion. I missed it. No cheese. Tomato and onion. Ugh. See, I'm gonna lose a burger and I didn't realize it, so this is a blue guy. So if I'd have done that in time, so these are all onions now. So would you believe me if I said that's the first time I've cleared it to stage one? Okay, so now there's two ingredients. Onion and lettuce. Onion and tomato. Onion and cheese. Onion and cheese. Bun. And that's blue. Onion. Tomato. Bun. And that goes to the green guy. Onion. Lettuce. Bun. And that goes to the green guy as well. Oh no, there is a cheese. Ooh, I saved it. That was barely in there. Cheese. And a bun. That's the blue guy. Tomato. Lettuce. Onion. Lettuce. Lettuce. Ah, oh, crap. I'm out of time. Pretty fun game. I'll play it one more time. I don't know that I'll get through to the uh, second level again. There's no tomatoes. There's no onions. It's all lettuce. Ugh. See, and I think the point of kicking it is to... or breaking it... is to, uh... blue again... tomato. Dang it. Lettuce. Red. Red. Blue. 
lose that burger. Oh no. And I screwed that one up too. And I missed the tomato. Bread. Cheeseburger. Green. Dang it. Oh, I didn't want to grab that. Can't do anything with it. Just lose ten minutes. Ugh. any lettuce. No one wants any cheese. So that's game, pressure cooker. I'm not that good at it. Um, didn't have a lot of time to practice because I was feeling ill, but um, I, uh, you know, it, it's a fun game. I'd recommend picking up and playing it. So the last game I have for tonight is a doozy. And I'll plug it in here and show you. It's Activision Space Shuttle. And so I will call up my information about Space Shuttle and let you know what it says. So Space Shuttle is cartridge HZ-033. It was released in 1983. And it uses the joystick as well as the console switches. Whoops. Did I switch my... I accidentally switched it up. I was flipping my switches so that they're in the default uh, positions for the game. Apologize. Um, so I've said before, maybe in this stream, maybe just on Twitter, uh, my best friend had this game when I was younger, and we played it. Him, my, bro my younger brother, and myself played it um, because we, we needed three people to play this game because we were children, obviously. Um, one person was Mission Control, and they read the instructions. The second person was the pilot, and they used the joystick. And the third person was either the co-pilot or the mission commander, and they controlled the Atari 2600. And, um, you know, there's all sorts of different things you need to do to play this game. And, uh, you know, there's, there's several different phases. There's launch... You stabilize your orbit, you dock with the space station, you do a deorbit burn, you do re-entry, you do a final approach and landing. And so each of those has different things required to, uh, to play this game. And so um, there's, there's three game levels in this game. The first one is just basically a demo mode where it shows you what the game, how to play the game. And you can take control of the space shuttle at any point you know, just for practice, it will not scrub your launch, it will not abort your mission, it will not do anything. Um, game two is a flight simulator, and it's not quite the full mission, but it basically simulates everything you need to do to um, play the game. And that's what I'll play here is game two, and it takes a while to play. Um, and game three is actually the STS 101 it simulates that game and you know i've not played that in a long time we played that when i was a kid but i've not played that in so long um i'm not going to attempt it here it's hard enough to just to do the flight simulator so this game is very complicated because it had a lot of additional uh, documents to it so first off there is the flight manual which is the instruction book for the game it is 31 pages long, which is unheard of back then for a video game. Um, and it, go, it you know, has detailed instructions on how to play the game, you know, what to do in every stage, and if you're having problems, you know, what to look for. Um, it's got a glossary in here. It's got a lot of things. The back page has something neat that I'll show you. And it's just to familiarize people with the space shuttle. It's got a layout and, you know, shows what's what here, you know. So 
it's uh it's pretty good manual and without it you really can't play the game i mean you need to study this thing to be able to play the game because if you just pick this up and play even game two you're gonna you're gonna fail the other thing it has is an overlay two overlays for the, the 2600 console there's the flight cheat sheet which is similar to what i think astronauts really have i think that's what they said you know they have things like that and then this game is so complicated you have an overlay that renames all your switches on your console now i only, I only have the four switch overlay i don't have the six switch and i didn't pull a four switch uh, system up here to play the game um, i find it easier you know with my hand mobility issues to use the uh, difficulty switches on the six switcher than the four switcher so fortunately i have all this stuff and i'll, and I'll go over it and and you know in detail but I, you know when i review the instructions i'm not going to go over it that much because there's just so much information in it and if you want to read it you know sources like atari age or atari compendium or the internet archive they have all this stuff available for you you, you know you can go there you can read it you can get copies of the overlays um, and you know just play the game but I, I recommend if you have the game and you want to play it if you don't have this stuff you're not going to be able to it's not intuitive in any sense of the word so VGR ratings for this game the graphics are rated 5 for excellent and the playability is 5 for irresistible and I can tell you with my best friend and my brother we had a lot of fun playing this game as kids and we'd switch roles you know, and, and each try to fly the shuttle and each do the mission control and, you know, the, the co-pilot mission and, you know, see what we could do, see what we could accomplish. Because for one 12 year old, it's just too much effort to, uh, to, to do all this stuff. I mean, granted, there probably were some 12 year olds that could play it, but we found it better just to have split the roles up and, and put it amongst three people because, you know, a lot of games didn't support that many players and even two player games that was turn based and just kind of boring. So I'm going to play game two, like I said, I'll switch to that and it's flight number two. So once I hit reset, the game actually starts. I'm going to pre check and make sure everything is off. Um, and uh, I'll just when I hit reset, it's going to start the game. So, and I'll try to talk what I'm doing when I'm doing it. So when the countdown starts, it's at 15 seconds, I need to turn the main engines on. And if I don't, uh, let's see, it, it's going to abort the mission. So let me show you that first. Launch scrub. So now I'm going to turn the main engines on, and at four seconds, the T is your throttle, the C is what the computer recommends your throttle to be at. I'm going to throttle up. When it's flashing, you're wasting fuel, is what they say in the main. And so now there's, now we're clearing the tower. So there's the flight path. So I need to move my throttle again, throttle down. There's my flight path at, at the bottom, and then my left and right, my yaw control. And I need to keep the yaw inside of the crosshairs and the flight path along that curved line. My, while maintaining the throttle. And then when I get over 200 nautical miles, I need to shut down the engines. So, it's a lot to keep track of. And, you know, the joystick left and right keeps the shuttle in the crosshairs. And the up and down keeps you on the path. That flash we just saw, that's when the solid rocket boosters um, separate from the shuttle. And that's actually the exact time that they do it in the real shuttle. So that warning is that I'm off my flight path.
210, ah, too far. So I went too high. That's my own fault. So now I'm in outer space. So now I need to stabilize. So I need to turn on my engines and I need to adjust my pitch. Oh, the 28. Oh, that's young. Pitch at 28, shut engines down, and then open the cargo bay doors to cool off the space shuttle. So now I can do game select. And so my speed is too fast. The, the, the space station moves at 23.9. Oops, pulled it the wrong way. Okay, so now I'm basically matching the speed of the space station. So I can take a little more time to explain what I'm doing here. So the altitude is too high. The fuel they don't use in the simulator. The Met, I don't, I, I, that's the something, the mission something time. And then this is um, status zero, which is everything normal. So to adjust your Z-axis, which my altitude was too high here, you can see it's 217. And they said that the space station sticks around 210, 210 nautical miles. So I need to push the button on the joystick and push forward. And that drops it down. And we need to take that to zero. And the minus sign indicates it's below me. Okay. So now my yaw, I need to adjust my yaw, which is left and right. And that's at 16, so... So I'm going to check my Z again. So now my X. So my speed is 23.8. So it's 16 meters or miles or something in front of me. So now I gave it a little more speed. I'm at 24. 23.9 is what they said it was at. And see now it's the distance is huge because when it wraps around the telemetry, it uh, it puts it behind you. Ten. Nine. So I'll take this second to check my Z is fine. Check my Y, it's negative, so to put that to zero. X is at nine. Now you need to get all of these to zero to rendezvous. And you need to hold it there for two seconds. And I've never been able to do it since I've been practicing. And I, you know, in the in the simulation, you see the um, the um, what you call it, the space station. And I don't see it here. I barely see the Earth. You know, it's that little white line. Four, check the Y again, that's zero, check the Z again, zero, three, two, one, zero. So now, one, two. So that is a rendezvous. So now it's behind me. One. I always do that the wrong way. Because it's above me. Okay. It's behind me.
Zero. One. No, uh, that wasn't long enough. One. Two. So that should have been enough time. Y is at zero. Z is at zero. So I don't know. And maybe it's my pitch is wrong. So I'm going to change my pitch. So this is more what it looks like. Oh, Jesus. Negative 28, not positive 28. That's what I was doing wrong. Oh, my goodness. Turn my main engines off. Rendezvous. How about that? I got my pitch wrong. So now it's going to shoot off into space. And let's see what my X distance is. I'll do a reorbit burn. So it's it's gaining distance. So I need to, to get up to 128. Um, correct your Z axis to zero. Set your speed to Mach 23.9. So let's see what my speed is. 23.9. Um, let's see what my z-axis is. I think I'm going the wrong way. No, I'm going the wrong way now. Okay. Speed is 23.9. So now I'm going to turn my engines on. And change my yaw to 100. No, sorry. 128. Now it doesn't say it here, but I'm going to shut my cargo bay doors. Um, so now. The engines are on. Ignite the engines by pressing the button and holding it till my speed is 19. And at 19, you fall out of orbit. Oh no. What was my pitch supposed to be? Correct Z axis. I'm going to shut my engines off. Oh, no. My speed is too low. Reset my yaw to zero. Status 8501. Oh, I'm on re entry. 6501, sorry. So that's probably telling me that I'm, you know, off course. So I'm trying to keep my dots in the crosshairs again and along the line. Those warning buzzers are letting me know that I'm off course and not doing well. And so here we're coming, coming down to burn. We're going to get the uh, re-entry burn coming up soon. There it started. And so we're going to lose telemetry here in a couple seconds. So it's important when you go into this telemetry blackout to be on course. And it flashes for you a little bit every now and then.
I hear the rumble of the reentry burn. Well, of course, too much. And now my telemetry's back. I made it through that turn. So that turn you have to do basically blind while you're playing the game. And so it's probably one of the most challenging parts of flying this thing. And I don't know how forgiving the actual mission is. There's a little more burn. Another turn coming up. So every time you slow down, it does a little plasma burn on you. So now we're in the... Um, we're lining up with the airfield. You see there's two dots here. We're low. So at one point you just look at the airfield. And there's a crosswind here that you can't control. That it bounces you all over the place. This is rougher than any of the previous ones I did. And now the crosswind is gone since we're close to the surface. Touchdown. And we'll stop at the end of the landing strip. Status 4001. I think that means that I landed the sh space shuttle. So I'm not going to go into any more. This is a, a long game to play. And basically you rack up points by rendezvousing with the space station multiple times. And, uh, you know, it, it goes away from you and then you catch up to it again. It goes away from you, you catch up to it again. And the less fuel you burn to do it, the, the better of a pilot that you are. And, you know, the higher level of award you can get from Activision for this game. So that's it for my stream today. I will be back again tomorrow with three more games. And again, if you like this retro gaming, retro gaming play and and uh, you know want to see more of it, please follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. I'm active on all three platforms. So if you need to, if there's anything you want to see, please reach out to me. You can contact me in the, the chat on Twitch which is probably my least um, functional way because when I'm playing the games, I try to focus on the games. And when I'm playing, uh, or you can also, I upload these videos to YouTube. You can contact me there. And then you can also contact me on Twitter. I'm very active on Twitter. I also put additional content out there and, uh, you know, things about my collection and things about, you know, other systems as well. So anyway, that's, like I said, that's my stream for today. Um, as always, I appreciate you watching, and thank you for spending the time with me. And please, be healthy, stay safe, wash your hands, and social distance. I'll be back tomorrow with three more games. Thank you again, and good evening.